Welcome to my lecture online. Our next example in using Green's theorem points out to something very specific that we need to pay attention to. Again, of course, Green's theorem means that instead of doing the line integral, we're going to calculate the Green's theorem portion of the equation, the right side of the equation, where we have to find the partial of q with respect to x and the partial of p with respect to y, and then simply integrate over the region bounded by the path taken on the line integral. But what we're doing here different is that we're going clockwise around the path instead of counterclockwise, which means we have a negative orientation. You can't really tell when you do Green's theorem, the right side of the equation here in Green's theorem, whether or not you went around the path clockwise or counterclockwise, so we have to pay attention at the end to make sure we give it the correct sign. If we have a negative orientation, then we need to add a negative sign to the final answer. If we have a positive orientation, then we take the answer as is when we apply Green's theorem. So here's an example of that, and then so at the end you can see what we need to do to the answer. It looks complicated. Again, we have a vector field. I don't think this is really a realistic vector field, but it's kind of a fun exercise. And again, of course, we're trying to find the line integral of the force dot dr, and that would be the same as doing this. Now this is in the same format as what we have here on the left side of Green's theorem, so we can actually apply Green's theorem. So we're going to find out what this is equal to right here on the right side. So this portion right here, this is our Q, and this portion right here is our P. So first we're going to take the partial derivative of Q with respect to X. So our first term right here with respect to X, that means we're going to get Y. So this is equal to y plus, now here we have a product, so we take the first x times the derivative of the second, which would be minus the sine of x, plus the second, which is the cosine of x, times the derivative of the first, which is 1. Now, we subtract from that the partial of p with respect to y, okay, so it's a little bit more complicated, but hang in there. So here we take our first term, so if y is the variable, then cosine of x is the coefficient, so that gives us the cosine of x, plus, oh, actually, because we have a minus here, we're going to take that and put that into a minus, and the derivative of this with respect to y, and so that would be x times the sine of x. Like that. And if we simplify that a little bit, this will look as follows. This is y minus x times the sine of x plus the cosine of x minus the cosine of x and plus x times the sine of x. And luckily, a bunch of things cancel out. So we have the cosine and negative cosine, they cancel out. And a minus x times the sine of x and a plus x times the sine of x, they cancel out as well. And so essentially, these equals y. So now we can go ahead and plug that in here. So this becomes equal to, now we're going to take the right side of Green's theorem. It's going to be the integral over the region and the partial of q with respect to x minus the partial of p with respect to y is equal to y. And then dA is going to be dx times dy. All right. Now, if we're going to integrate, let's first integrate in the y direction. So here's our small little dA. And we're going to integrate first in the y direction, which means we're going to integrate from y equals 0 to y equals this line. And this line can be defined as y equals the y-intercept, and then the slope is a minus 2 times x. So y is equal to 4 minus 2x. So this can now be written as the double integral, first over in the y direction from 0 to y equals 4 minus 2x, and in the x direction from x equals 0 to the first point of the right, which is 2, and that gives us y dx dy, and maybe what I'll do here is I'll, re I'll interchange these, write dy and dx first, because we're first going to integrate y dy. So that becomes equal to, well, we still have our first integral from 0 to 2, and then here what we end up with is um, y squared over 2, evaluated from 0 to 4 minus 2x, and then we still have a dx for our second integral. 
we can pull out a one half and then plug in the upper limit. When plug in the lower limit, we get nothing. So this would be equal to one half times integral from zero to two when we integrate over the x direction. And plugging this in here, that'll give us 16 minus 16 x, I believe. Let's see here. So that, that's twice the product of those two. That's minus 8x times 2. And let's see here. And then we have uh, plus 4x squared, the whole thing times dx. And now we're ready to do our second integral. So this is equal to 1 half times. That gives us 16x minus 16x squared over 2 and plus 4x cubed over 3 evaluated from 0 to 2. And you can see here that when plugging the lower limit, we get nothing. All we have to do is plug in the upper limit. So this is 1 half times uh, 16 times 2, that's 32. And here we have 4 divided by 2 is 2 times 16, that's minus 32. Huh? That cancels out nicely. And that's 8, that's 32 divided by 3. So that's plus 32 divided by 3. And of course, these two cancel. And 1 half times 32 is 16. So this gives us 16 divided by 3. Now you say, OK, there's my answer, but not so fast. Because again, there was a negative orientation, which means right from the start, we knew we we're going to have to add a negative sign to take into account that we're going around the path in a clockwise direction rather than a counterclockwise direction. So all along, we realized that this was going to be equal to the negative of that. So we can just say the negative of that, the negative of that, the negative of that, negative, negative, and negative. And so this, in essence, is the correct answer for that particular problem. So keep in mind that when you use Green's theorem, you really have to realize which direction you're going around the path, and if it's a negative orientation, that you account for that. Now, if you do the line integral, that's automatically done. But with the Green's theorem, we just have to be aware of that, and so we can adjust the answer with the negative sign if that is necessary. And that's how it's done.